Baseball opened their 2009 Sudi Athletic Conference this past weekend. And it was a scheduled game in a doubleheader at New Poles on April 5th. And in one uh, game one, they got a 7-2 win. Freshman pitcher Matt O'Leary went all nine innings and improved to an impressive 5-0. and O'Leary gave up 10 hits, but with only one of the extra base variety. O'Leary also had five strikeouts with only three walks and two earned runs. Even though the final wasn't very close, the game was only 3-2 in favor of Plattsburgh in the seventh before the Cards played it four in a row. Kyle Kowalski had three hits, while Matt Kelly, Joe Curcio, and Pat Jonasi, both all three of them chipped in with two RBIs each. As you see right there, Plattsburgh really convincing game one win over New Paul, 7-2. O'Leary getting five strikeouts. And right there, Kelly and Curcio really coming up two hits each. And Kowalski, like I said, three hits. So right there, PSU advancing the record to 13-6 and six. so far, having a great season. Absolutely. And in the second game, the Cardinals had a 5-3 to three lead going into the eighth, but later fell behind when the Hawks scored four runs, putting them in the lead, 7-5. to five. Senior Matt Matt, senior pitcher Matt Kelly had a big night leading Plattsburgh with, a, with two hits, including two doubles and three RBIs. Freshman infielder Pat Shaughnessy also had a big night, hitting his first career home run, giving the Cardinals a 1-0 lead in the second inning. And John Campbell added a pair of hits for Plattsburgh. In the ninth, the Cardinals had a perfect opportunity to stage a comeback when they had the bases loaded from a leadoff double by Andrew Gooch. Gooch scored on a sacrifice fly, but unfortunately, Timmy Chillis made a double play, ending the game. Fortunately, we couldn't pull it off by one, seven to six. Kelly and Campbell each counted for two hits. Pat Shaughnessy slammed his home run, and that ups us, or that brings us down 13 to seven. Yes, and switching diamonds over to softball, the Plattsburgh State women's softball team came up short, facing off against the Geneseo Blue Knights during a Suniac double hitter. The ladies lost the first game two to one, and the second game four to three. This now puts the Cardinals at six and 16 for the year, and one and three in the Suniac. In the first game, freshman pitcher Bree Allen held the Blue Knights to just one run and three hits. The Knights came back and scored an unearned run late in the seventh, winning the game by a one-run advantage over Plattsburgh. Again, we came up shy to the plate by one. Jared G, one hit. Clark, one hit. Six to five. Not the greatest start for the season, but... No, you know, and like you see, they're 6-15. and 15. They're having a little rough start. start they lost yep. game one. They had a doubleheader that, game, that day as well, you know. And at 6-15, and 15, really making some mistakes. They're pitching okay in that game, as you can see, only giving up two runs. No offense generated, though. And the yeah. girls actually played two that game, so to the second game we will go. And Plattsburgh softball dropped game two as well as game one to Geneseo. The final in that one was 4-3. Heather Lauren did strike out six, though, and held Geneseo to three earned runs as she went the full seven, so pitched the whole game. But the cards came within one in the fifth when the ladies scored two and almost tied it up at four, but stranded a runner on base. Nicole Dimer went two for three with two RBIs for the cards, while Amy Wu went two for two with one run scored in this loss. So again, another hard loss. Both game twos, both for baseball as well as softball, mm -hmm. having a tough time on those game twos. Wednesday night was a big night for Plattsburgh State men's lacrosse team who defeated Oneonta State for the first time in 10 meetings. Till last night, Plattsburgh had gone 0-9 and nine and was outscored 127-69 to 69 since the Oneonta series began back in 2000. Last night also makes for the second time in three years that the Cardinals won their conference opener. The Cardinals defeated the Red Dragons 16-14 to 14 in a SUNYAC conference game. The Cardinals ended their three-game losing streak to improve to 6-5 and five overall, including 1-1 one and one in the SUNYAC. Kyle Norkey ignited Plattsburgh with back-to-back -back goals halfway through the second quarter. Late in the third, Plattsburgh went on a scoring streak of eight unanswered goals that turned a 6-3 to three deficit into an 11-6 lead. Norkey ended the match with a game high of four goals and one assist. Luke Wadeland and Adrian Moreno both had powerful games, both adding three goals and two assists. Goaltender Matt Bilio refused 14 shots. Here, pulled it off by two. Wadeland uh, again with a hat trick. Norkey with four goals and Marino again with another hat trick. We had six more shots on goal than uh, Oneana did, and we have a better record, 6-5. to five. And, Bobby, Plattsburgh scored on all five man-up opportunities. Well, um, it was successful, 19 of 23 clears, and had more than more ground balls, 54-34. to 34, So they really did dominate the game. Now, to a little track and field action we go. The Plattsburgh State men's track and field team traveled to Clinton, New York over the weekend for the Hamilton Invitational. Invitational, senior Andrew Krug led his team coming in first in the high jump with a height of 
1.88 meters. I don't even know how tall that is. <laughs> and I know I can't jump it. And then placed fifth in the 110 meter hurdles. Teammate Peter Ham also put up two great finishes with a second in the 200 meter dash and a third in the 100 meter dash. Followed by Charles Berg, who placed third in the discus. Alice Carboni had a great throw of 32.89 meters. Seth Yearney placed third in the 1500 and four by 400 relay and placed fourth with a time of 342.89. And I know that's going to beat my time in that one. So as you see, Andrew Krug getting that first place win right there on the high jump. The 110 meter hurdles getting that fifth. Peter Ham taking second and third in those races. And as for field, you see Charles Berg getting third there. And really, just a nice job. We got another second and third. So a really nice job by the track and field men's mm -hmm. team right there of, you know, kind of getting in a nice range of medals. And you, you think would. that was impressive. Wait till you hear about the women's track and field. Plattsburgh, yeah. Plattsburgh State women's track team was a first place finisher in the 4x100 meter relay with a finishing time of 51.79 seconds at the Hamilton Invitational. The ladies continued the day with a lot of success. Even though no team scores were kept, the Lady Cardinals recorded five, that is, five first place finishes in the finishes, one in second place finish, two third place finishes, four fourth place finishes, and three competitors finished with a fifth place finish. Adding to the first place finishers were Joanne Terrelly in the 400 meter hurdles with a finishing time of one minute and eight seconds, Amy McCaslin in the 200 meter with a finishing time of 26.63 seconds, Crystal Yearney in the 5000 meter with a finishing time of 19 minutes and eight seconds, and lastly finishing in first place was Jacqueline Boye, to Boye's toss of 31.76 meters in the javelin. The second place finish was recorded by a 4x400 four meter relay team with a finishing time of 4 minutes and 48 seconds. Coming in third place was Jen, the Jens. Jen Modzel ran the 1500 meter run in 5 minutes and 12 seconds, and Jen Taft ran the 5000 meter run in 19 minutes and 23 seconds. Fourth place finishers were Stephanie Braun in the 1500 meter run, Stephanie Adamzak in the hammer throw, Shannon Young in the shot putt, and Holly Black in the javelin. Jacqueline Boye also finished in fifth place in the hammer throw with a distance of 28.93 meters. Other fifth place finishers were Colleen Cody in the 1500 meter run and Holly Black in the long jump, and those are jobs that are well done. The women's hockey um, team, Brian and Kane, participated in gender and sports discussion panel recently. The women's studies here at Plattsburgh State University put on a round table discussion about gender and sports. The group invited senior hockey players Ainsley Bryan and Tara Khan to participate in this discussion along with associates librarian Minu Su and athletics director Bruce Delventhal. Su began the discussion by providing a look back into history at the governmental and legislative issues that have offered women a segue into athletics. Among these were the 1972 Pat T. Mink Equal Opportunity and Education Act and the Title IX. Some of the female athletes admit to not even knowing of the history of women being allowed into the participate into the NCAA. However, they are aware that they have had the opportunity and perhaps are fulfilling the dreams of their mothers who did not have the same opportunities available to them while they were attending college. The discussion went on to talk about men's hockey versus women's hockey and the differences between the two growing up in between the two growing up in Canada. Neither Brian nor Khan ever gave it much thought having to play on boys' peewee te hockey teams. Khan did say when she got to be about 16 and was about 4'11", and the guys were about 6 foot, that definitely became a problem, she said. Khan, her mother, and her coach formed the Pacific Steelers, which was an all-female squad that participated in Provincials, and gave Khan and other women the opportunity to continue to play hockey competitively until going to college. The opportunities for women in sports have grown tremendously over the years and are still continuing to grow. However, they are still factors such as fan support between men and women's sports. People have to start realizing that when they go to a women's game, they aren't going to get the same game as men's, Delventhal said. Women's hockey is not the same sport as men's, but you definitely have to appreciate it. Delventhal also said that the women athletes are much more direct and confident than male athletes, and, and that confidence factor is one of the great things that intercollegiate sports have brought to the table.